to episode 28 of the Jurassic World.org podcast. Me and Assis here. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. How's it going? Good. How are you? You know, tired as usual. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's funny. We were talking the other day about how there's never any news at the moment. It's very quiet. And then all of a sudden, we get bombarded with with news, which is always a good thing. So we've uh, kind of kicked these podcasts back into gear. How unfortunate, because I have to wake up in the mornings now, and it, it just <laughs> it's a shitty time for everyone. Yeah, man. Um, so, th- I mean, the main news is that J.A. Biona, I think that's how you pronounce it, yeah, I think is so. no longer directing the World War Z sequel, which we know, and Deadline keep reporting this second or third time they've reported it now that he's a potential frontrunner, which, you know, they're in the know. Yeah, but the way they phrase the article, it's like, nothing's actually happened, no one's actually talked to each other yet, but it could happen. That's what it sounds like to me. I think it has. I think Colin tweeted or, or said in an interview or something about how they're looking for a Spanish horror director. And, um, you know, he's a Spanish horror director. I think it's just coincidence, though, isn't it? I don't think it's coincidence. No way, man. They know. I think he's going to be it. I just think he's probably not signed anything yet. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I think they clearly think he's he's the right guy for the job. And, you know, I think... I'm glad they've chosen someone who's done darker stuff, you know, horror. Even though The Orphanage and The Impossible were never considered, you know, 10 out of 10 movies. They're still very good for what they are. The Orphanage, I need to rewatch. They're solid, like, 8 out of 10 movies. Exactly. Like, solid 8, which is not bad. It's it's a good... That's like an A average. It's not bad at all. So I'll take exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Give him a... I mean, he's never going to get a 10 out of 10, you know, sequel to Jurassic Park. It's never going to happen, is it? I mean, it just Not doesn't. Not anymore, no. It's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, I think he can handle the material. I think if he's given the right material... You know, he'll take it to a good place. I hope. Anyway, I hope he's a good choice. And he will have to start tweeting in English so that we can pull news from him. Well, you're, Chris is American. He can speak Spanish. Don't they like, have to learn <laughs> Spanish or something? Isn't that how it works in the States? I don't know. Does it? We, I don't we know. I learned learn French, French, so who knows? Yeah, we, yeah, we learned French, but I, can't, I couldn't speak a word of it now. Oh, that's too bad, son. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Especially because I'm like an hour from France. Yeah, I'm I fine. should totally be able to speak it, but yeah. So he's he's pretty exciting. You know what? I think, I think in like two months' time, we're gonna be sick of hearing all the director shit. Yeah, like I, I mean, even though I'm fine with him being director, I think it's a really good choice. I would love the whole, you know, build up of who's gonna direct. Here's like a list the potential of candidates. Yeah, yeah I, then, want like, because, I want that. I want that. Let you know on the last podcast we discussed who like we maybe wanted to see, and we talked and pretty much everyone we talked about was either thriller or horror director but I mean I'd love to see a list like I remember when Captain America was uh, was uh, in production and they had a, a the huge thing was who's going to play Captain America and the list was huge and then in the end they landed on Chris Evans which no one thought they would do I don't know I want that kind of hype again I want you know who's going to direct Jurassic World 2 I think it'd be really exciting I think in like a month's time we'll have our short list if we get one and then by March, I think, we'll be like, oh, here's our official director. Get to know him. Watch his shit. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I wonder how they'll announce it. Whether it'll be a tweet by Colin, like whether he's going to sort of run the franchise from now on, or if Frank will, you know, be the one who tweets it. Or... I, don't I think know it's probably like happen. a Deadline or Variety article, right? Yeah, yeah. And then Frank will retweet. Yeah. That's how it usually, that's how it usually goes down. I'm excited, though. Who, who would you like to see? Honestly, J.A. was my number one choice. Really? Yeah, which is strange. It was him and, like, some other person did, like, some small horror movie thing. But he, rewatching that movie wasn't as good as I remembered it, but still, I think he could have done it. Mm. You know what? I could you know. imagine if we got the, uh, fucking Inaradu guy? The guy who did Revenant and, like, Birdman? Wouldn't that be something? <sighs> yeah, but, like, I mean, I haven't seen Reverend, so I cannot, I can't talk about it, but... Birdman was okay, but like this, it's, that's like a star director. He's like, he's like it, that's yeah, a name, I, man. I don't know. Would be I cool, know. I guess. I don't know. I, I'd rather. I mean, yeah, I get it. I, but I just, I'd rather they go for someone like Alex Garland or J.A. You know, someone who's not known as well as that, but they actually make good films. You know, they make solid movies. Alex Garland is um, ex Machina, right? Yeah, which was. Fantastic. Man, if they get him and, like, let him write it, that'd be sweet. Yeah, I mean, even that, just, like, what he could do with the material would be really interesting because, 
I don't know if you've seen Ex Machina. Have you seen it? I have, yes. Yeah, it's, it's creepy and weird and We can scary get some and... sweet moral moral conversations yeah, exactly. with Jurassic yeah. World 2. They need to. They need to. Um, that, so the other news, um, just before we play the interview, was Universal to show Jurassic World footage during a uh, VR event at Sundance 2016. So this news has just come out, but obviously the picture that's in our article of the Apatosaur and the original Jeep, we've seen that before. That was the Samsung thing, right? The VR thing that Chris got to see. Yes. So are they showing more of that or like new footage or new scenes? Um, or what's the deal? It's like, it's like I think it's extended. It's loads of new footage and I think you're going to get to play around with it. It's, it's it's Obviously it says immersive 360 degrees videos and photos, discover, watch and share the best content, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so I had to uh, pretty much, yeah, it, it I, doesn't really I, detail what it's going to do other than obviously that a patasaur is going to be play a part. I want to see that shit so bad, but like, how do I get uh, how do I get a hold of it in Canada? Like, what do I have to do to watch this shit somehow? Dude, you're closer than me. <laughs> where is it? I in, f- where is Sundance? A Sundance is in America, right? Yeah, somewhere though, isn't it? But where? Uh, well, I would imagine California. Man, or are we completely wrong? Only a matter of time before your films were in Sundance. Take me with you. <laughs> hey, man, I'll get some VR up and running there. Fuck yeah. No, I'm really interested in that Jurassic, but it but it bugs me that um, we haven't got a game. We're not going to get a game for so and, long, man. It's going to it's going to be so long. They've got this awesome VR thing. You know why? I, I, you know, know why you we won't it. get a game, Jack? It's because that stupid um, the Jurassic World Builder thing. That makes so much money through microtransactions. There's no point making a game and then spending like a million dollars in dev stuff. You know? So wrong, isn't it? I yeah. So if you buy those things, people listening, stop buying things. Stop giving them money. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to play the Jurassic Park game on iPhone. It was okay. It was fun. Yeah. But, you know, I, I played like, you know, one mission on the Jurassic World one and I got bored and I was like, ah, oh, it's so repetitive and it's not fun anymore. No. You know? You got quite far with it, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, until they introduced like the stupid fucking tournament stuff and whatever, and I just stopped. The tournament thing was annoying. Yeah, yeah, it's I wasn't for that. Yeah, I don't know. I think they ran that game into the ground a little bit. I'm sure there's people that still play it, but I wouldn't. Sp- I spent too much money on it the first time around. I'm not spending any more money. <laughs> good, good and they call. lost my park. Do you remember when they lost my park? I remember they that. Get you it were back. fucking livid for a while. Yeah, and they wouldn't even refund it. So didn't, I was didn't like, they give you like a hundred bucks or some shit? Yeah, well, they tried. I was like, I don't want it. I want my <laughs> save back. <laughs> That's hilarious. Idiots, man. Um, but yeah, so... <clears throat> uh, you're listening to this podcast. You probably heard the news um, that Chronicle de- uh, Collectibles, in case you haven't, Chronicle Collectibles to debut something. Uh, oh, we can just say it, can't we, Assis? It's going to go I think we should. Time. I'll it's let you say it. I'll let you say it. Yeah, you say it. All right. Well, we we were so you're about to hear a, an exclusive inter- interview with uh, Paul from Chronicle Collectibles that we had yesterday, uh, Ryan, Chris, and I. Um, and you know, I mean, we were just going to chat to him about what he's done and what Chronicle have done, and and we kind of dropped the question. You know, what's next? And he gave us the exclusive that Chronicle Collectibles are about to debut a Dr. Alan Grant and Owen Grady six scale figures, which is. Uh, pretty damn exciting this is exactly what we wanted we were talking about this on the podcast the other day and then the next day yeah. we had that news it's fantastic good stuff every single episode of this podcast where we where hasbro or the toy line have come up we've all complained about how there's no human figures and how there's no collectibles there's no you know there's nothing out there star wars is obviously a bigger franchise but it has so much and i said saying to paul in the podcast which you will hear i will play it i promise um I was saying to him, I was in I was in a comic book store and I picked up uh, the Han Solo and Chewie six scale figure and I just looked at it and I, all I could think of was why don't we have one of these for Jurassic Park? Like why doesn't it exist? And then yeah, it exists now, my friend. It's coming this year as well. Oh shit! That's available sick. for pre order this year. Uh, probably be about two hundred dollars. But you'll hear all this in the podcast. There's also some very uh, very cool other items that they've got in the making, which uh, Paul talks about. So. Honestly, check um, check it out. Yeah, here's the link. No, um, <laughs> I guess I'll play that now. Unless there's anything else you uh, you uh, want to jive in with, Assis? I think we've covered most things down the couple of days, right? I think so. We've been on fire. We have been on fire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Three recordings, three days. 
That's too many. Know, Time to take like a three month break now, yeah? It is too many. I'm like running around and quickly driving home and like recording Skype and then running back out. Yeah. <laughs> so much. But yeah, cool. All right. So here is our interview with um, Paul from Chronicle Collectibles. And we hope you will, well, at the end of that, we hope you've enjoyed episode 28 of the Jurassic World Dog Podcast. Tight. We are joined with Ryan, Chris, and of course, Paul Francis from uh, Chronicle Collectibles, the art director. Hey, Paul. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Pretty good, good. yourself? Excellent. I'm glad to be here and talk a little bit about the uh, Jurassic Park franchise with you guys. Yeah. yeah, so this was this was pretty exciting news when it first came when you first have, said on your Facebook that you had acquired the rights to the Jurassic uh, Jurassic Park the franchise, uh, the whole franchise pretty much. Yeah, we have uh, we have all four movies, and we are in in what's called a collectibles category. So it's really anything that's over two hundred dollars. It's kind of our domain, mm. and it's almost like we have an exclusive in that division, which is kind of unheard of, you know. Um, yeah. I but mean, we, what... th- we, we think the power of Jurassic Park is going to be a great asset for us. No, definitely. I mean, the, the fandom's strong. Um, I've got to ask, what, so what led you to the Jurassic Park license in the first place? Well, I've always been a huge Jurassic Park fan. I mean, who can forget, you know, the first scene where they drive up the hillside in the Jeeps and you see the Brachiosaurus eating from the trees, you know, I mean, everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody either cried or you, you laughed or you cheered and... And, um, you know, I grew up with these films and, and we had actually been trying to get a Jurassic Park license for probably since we started the company and they were working on the new film Jurassic World and they wanted to wait till the new film was out before or getting close to coming out before they would grant a license. Right. Okay. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, Um, before we jump into all that, could you tell us maybe I guess a little bit about yourself in Chronicle, just for people who don't know? Sure, yeah. Um, I've been working in the industry for about 20 years. Um, I started uh, way back with Steve Johnson's XFX. I was a model maker on several uh, motion pictures, and then Steve Johnson and I created a collectibles company where we had the Terminator 2 license, and we were like the first ones to right after there was another company making Terminator skulls, but we were the next one in line to start making Terminator skulls and one-to-one scale endoskeletons. And then later I partnered with Sideshow and Sideshow released most of my products um, through their website. And then I took a little bit of time off and kind of regrouped. And in 2008, we did some stuff with Sony for the release of Ghostbusters and the video game. And um, so that was kind of cool. And then, you know, about two and a half years ago, I met my partner, Clay Brown, and we started Chronicle Collectibles, and Clay's the business side, I'm the art side of it, and uh, we've we've grown from a, you know, a small company in an 800-square-foot office to 12,000 square feet, and we've got about six employees now, so we're, we're growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, absolutely, and you guys have a lot of cool licenses even beyond Jurassic Park. Yeah, I mean, we have Terminator Genesis, which was, you know, has made almost a billion dollars now. We've got, you know, the Jurassic Park franchise. We have RoboCop. We we just signed the new TV series, Vikings. I saw uh, that. Which, oh, which, nice. Which, which is hugely, hugely popular. Um, we've got, uh, oh my gosh, we've got Conan, which is coming out soon. Um, we've just, we've got Starship Troopers. We even, nice. I'm kind of like, I like the older, obscure stuff, you know. We've got Flash yeah. Gordon. We've got Buck Rogers. You know, we it's it's one of those things where I try to fill a niche and you know, we don't make I mean on some of our pieces, like on the Terminator skull, we'll make about a thousand units on that, but with some of the Terminator items and even the classic items we make, you know, one hundred, two hundred, you know, three hundred pieces and that's kind of our thing. Our whole motto is artist, artifact art. We deal with the original artist artist, we deal with the original movie prop if we can. And then we create art. We're not making statues. So I think that's kind of what sets us apart. Um, the other advantage for collectors is uh, the company that manufactures our product is a company called Toy Nami. They do Elite Creature Collectibles. They do Cinema Cat. Both of those are synonymous, synonymous with the highest quality in the industry. So when you buy one of our products, and we're a little higher than most, it's because you're getting Cinema Cat quality at a third the cost. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the quality there. I've seen some of the pieces in person for some of the things that you guys have, and it's fantastic. Well, thank you very much. It's We, we try to, you know, we, we try to deliver on time. We try to deliver relatively quickly. Some of our products get a little bit delayed because I'll – I'll fuss over the details and, you know, I just want everything to be a hundred percent accurate, you know, to the original film prop. And with Jurassic Park, you have to kind of venture off into, um, what's accurate to what was CGI. So there was two things yeah. in Jurassic Park. You have Stan Winston's dinosaurs, which were these gorgeous sculptures that worked flawlessly. Probably not if you heard Stan talk about them, but, in my opinion, you know, they really worked well on screen, and that's all that matters. And even if they were digitally cleaned up a little bit, that's fine. But at the end of the day, what we have to do is we have to interpret, you know, what was CGI and what was actually modeled and try to blend the two. Yeah. I mean, for instance, there are some slight difference, you know, differences between the Tyrannosaur CG and live action model. It, they had some slight differences with their visual. Yeah, look. it's, it's, it, it's, it's not, slight, but it's there. No, you're absolutely correct, and I think a lot of it is in the anatomy. I mean, people who really know lizards, you know, know that they have their hip bones are a certain way. They have a cloaca, you know, they have all of these things, and, and with the T-Rex, he has this bone that protrudes down between his legs, which, you know, is not on the CGI model. It's not on stands. It's because Steven Spielberg didn't want to see that. You know, he thought that it kind of broke up the, the look of the dinosaur a little bit, so we've tried to not make it accurate to real life. We've tried to make it accurate to what you saw on screen. And it, and it's kind of difficult because we don't deal with universal licensing for the approvals on this. We deal with the archives and we deal with Steven Spielberg's office. That's so, so it's a little more complicated for us to get things approved because Steven has to sign off on it. That's actually something I did want to ask you about. Is that something you can go into a little bit more depth of what it's like to create a product and get approvals and how you look at the archives and references? <laughs> sure. You know, with most of our products, because we deal with the original movie prop, I just make a prototype and I send it to Sony. I make a prototype, I send it to MGM. And because I've cast it from the original screen use prop, I don't worry about going through all of the steps of like, hey, I need to see a production sketch. I need to see blah, blah, blah. I need to see the base. We just do it because we know at the end of the day, we haven't changed what Phil Tippett, we haven't changed what any of these guys have done. With Jurassic, it's extremely diff different. We, even with like the wall plaque for the, for the male T-Rex from Lost World, um, you know, we had to sketch that. We had to get the sketch approved. Then we had to sketch the base. We had to get the sketch base approved. Then we had to get a gray prototype just painted and mounted the base and then get that approved. And then we had to get the paint master done and then get that approved. And then, you know, as soon as we get the first production sample, we'll have to get that approved. We don't do a lot of those steps with the other companies. And I'm not saying that we probably shouldn't. It's just I'm confident that we're not going to get any kickback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of work goes into that. It's a lot of work to make a product. I think a lot of people don't realize how many steps can be involved, especially with Jurassic. Yeah, and, and the thing that people didn't understand was we announced Jurassic Park, and then it probably took us, I don't know, four or five months you know, to get the mail wrecks out. And we did the mail wrecks first because it was something that we had. It was something that existed. Um, we put it out. We put it on a Jurassic Park base, and then everybody went, oh, it's not from Jurassic Park. It's from Jurassic Lost World. So I was like, well, crap. I've spent a month getting this approved with a Jurassic Park base, and they approved it with a Jurassic Park base. <laughs> and I thought, well, let's just – and then then I was like, nope. And then the 11th hour, we put the Lost World on there, and and we submitted it back through, I think, for the paint process. And we changed the base, and they caught it. And, but they just let it go right on through. So I was like, whew, I was like, oh my gosh, that was, that was a close one, you know. So, um, but there again, that just shows that I'll listen to the fans. You know, I'll listen to you guys. If if there's something we're not doing that's right, I want to hear it because we don't catch it all. You know, we don't think about, oh, in my heart of hearts, I really wanted to say Lost World instead of Jurassic Park because it was the female. Okay, well, you know, we'll listen to you guys. Sure. Absolutely. I think I think okay. that's such an important such an important factor um, because obviously these these products, like you said, they're over two hundred dollars. So 
right. people want it people want them to be accurate and right and <clears throat> most of the time i'm sure you are right but yeah i think as we saw with the rex yeah now they're now in it, it's a fantastic piece and there's um, just so many little details and it's they're not all easily archived it's not easy to access all of the uh especially well, with jurassic as we know i mean we knew that the you know the mail was from lost world but to me to have the jurassic park logo on there is more important to me than having the lost world logo on there i mean i get it from the fan standpoint that he's from lost world they want it to say lost world but Personally, I would want it to say Jurassic Park because they're all from the Jurassic Park franchise. The logo is the same, you know, for all the movies. So, you know, I mean, it was just one of those things where, hey, if that's what the fans want, that's what the fans get. And I'll, I'll, I've done this before, you know, we did Ed 209 from Robocop and one of the fans, well, not one, but a legion of fans went on there and said they hated the base and we changed the base, you know, because of the fans feedback on stuff. So I'm, I'm. I always I always say it like this. There's a lot of collectible companies who want to take something and make it their own, meaning that they have they may have like an art director or something that has this big ego who wants to change something so he can say, oh, I did that. You know, I'm you know, my wife uses the analogy. It's like the lines of the savannah. You know, one comes along, whizzes on the tree. Another one comes along, whizzes on the tree. I'm not like that. I, I just want to reproduce what you saw on screen and make it as humanly cool as possible. I don't care if my name is ever attached to it. You don't see my name attached as the art director to any of our products. We don't list the artists. We will eventually, you know, because I think the artists deserve the credit for a lot of this stuff. So I think we'll do that at some point. I think right now we just want to show that we're all about the product. Absolutely. And I think that's something interesting to note is with the uh, the mail Rex, the one fifth uh, head bust, you have the original Winston mold that you cast it from. But with something like the uh, T Rex uh, breakout statue that you've been teasing at, um, that's probably a whole different process. Oh my gosh, the breakout statue! Good let's lord. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. So that's next. <laughs> um, yeah, the the breakout statue is something that I've always had in the back of my mind that is the most iconic scene in the film, in my opinion, when she breaks through the barrier. I'm not sure how she steps over a 50 foot high wall in the film, but um, because you got to remember that Jeep goes over the side of the wall where she just stepped through and it hangs in a tree. It's got to be 50 feet off the ground. So we'll we'll suspend belief there for a second. (laughs) When she steps across that wall and she roars for the first time, I mean, when I saw that film for the first time, I mean, it sent cold chills down my spine, and I said, "That's that's the iconic image of the T Rex for me." So, when we started working on that, that's the CGI model. That is not Stan Winston's at all. Um, so Dean Tolliver, who gets the line share of the credit for a lot of the stuff that we do, he's our digital artist. Um, we had the CGI file sent to us from Jurassic World. Um, So the female in Jurassic World, she's a little more emaciated. She's the only surviving character from JP, um, and she made it through all all the films. So they consider her like her, you know, they're like her cornerstone of their collection, I guess. So she's a little emaciated. So Dean had to take an emaciated dinosaur and kind of fill her back out, make her look robust, remove all the scars and everything that she had had since she got up there. And then we had to overlay it onto the the actual film cell and start sculpting it so it's a very hard process to reverse engineer that i'm just going to be honest with you yeah i mean i've seen a little bit of i know um industrial light and magic was showing some of the process they went through sculpting that dinosaur and i think what they did is they scanned the uh actually one of the one fifth maquettes if i'm not mistaken for the uh, t-rex they 3d they 3d scanned it and then they made a lot of changes to the model. Like you said, they made her emaciated. I think that they enlarged her feet. Um, I think they did a few other things, or maybe they shrunk her feet, something like that. But they, uh, you know, it's interesting to note that that model, it's pretty it's pretty damn close to the CG model. It's pretty damn close to the Stan Winston one, but it still has some slight differences. And it's yeah, just, you've it, got to work with a lot of variables. Yeah, no, that's true. And we actually have the one fifth maquette, the full seven foot T Rex here, which which helped a tremendous amount. Um, and recently, a collector, uh, Jonathan, loaned us his fifth scale head. 
So we have now the fifth scale female T-Rex, which she'll be on the Jurassic Park logo. We're going to do her as a, the next one of the series. So it was, it's been kind of cool because it, it just shows how much this Jurassic Park community wants to pull together that a guy's willing to send me a priceless artifact to pour rubber on with the risk that it could get destroyed because it was foam. It wasn't a resin copy. And of course we, if you've seen on the Facebook page, we molded it and cast it and it, it came out flawless. We didn't hurt it at all. So um, he was happy. He just got it back and he was very happy that he was able to contribute to the, you know, to the cause um, getting back to the one twentieth scale. There's a lot of flaws in that. T-Rex when she busts through the fence. One most notably is her right foot, the inside toe is really broken. I mean, it's like it's it, it's like three feet out of position, you know. And when we did the overlays with it and we're looking at the position of the feet, you know, it's almost like they they knew the dinosaur movement, and I'm sure Phil had a lot to do with the dinosaur movement and everything, but one of the feet was just totally jacked up. So we had to make the executive decision, do we do it jacked up like the film and people go, oh, man, she's got a broken foot, or do we change it? And we changed it. So if you look at the overlays that we post on the internet and you look at her right foot, you'll see a toe that kind of juts straight out the side. And we didn't remove it. We just left it there because we figured if somebody said anything about it, we would just we would explain why you know, we fix that one foot. But otherwise, yeah. we use the fifth scale maquette. We use Jonathan's bust as reference. We use, you know, screen caps from the movie. They've sent us just tons and tons and tons and tons of photographs of the T-Rexes and all the dinosaurs. So we have all of that. So I think it was a combination of Dean just pulling down every bit of detail and me going in there every day and going, no, that's not right. We need to change this. And him probably wanting to stab me in the eye because I, <laughs> I literally, we made God, before we sent that over for final approval, I bet we changed it 50 times. I'm not kidding I, you guys. I mean, it was like every day we would see something new and we would add it to it. You know, I noticed when you're posting the little teases on it, I noticed tiny little minor like differences and it, it. I could only imagine the work that went into, do, you know, <laughs> bringing that to life it, it you know i would say i would say dean's probably got i mean if i had to hazard a guess i would say he he probably has close to 100 hours maybe 150 hours in that piece you know so wow. what we do is not cheap and and then to print it you know i mean to print a two-foot dinosaur on these high-end um we use sla machines we don't use object or anything like that we use sla so there's no there's no grow lines on our parts. So we can go directly from the machine to mold and um, with just very minimal cleanup. So, you know, it's, it's it, I, my hat's off to Dean. I mean, he really stuck in there. We, we designed a really cool piece. And, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, it might be a little expensive, but it's going to be, it's going to be killer. You know, it's I'll gonna, be honest. I think that's going to be my favorite piece that I own. <laughs> um, not just I mean, obviously Jurassic Park, but not just Jurassic Park. Like that just might end up being my favorite piece that I own once I get a hold of that. Once I buy one of those, when oh. when do you think uh, we'll be able to see that? Well, we have about half the printed parts right now. We're working on the base, and we just got the little uh, light that's on the post printed nice so we we actually hired another digital artist who does hard surface and he's a master at it and forgive me i can't remember his name right off this right off the hand he's one of dean's really good friends and um he does really good hard surface and he did the little light so when you even when you see the little warning light on the post i mean we we probably spent you know 10 20 hours just creating a stupid light you know and it, and that's kind of how crazy i like to go with some of this stuff because you know the devil's in the details at the end of the i day. love it it's yeah. fantastic paul can you just take my money now i mean <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it, it it's one of those things where you know i think the the 20th scale rex is something that everybody's wanted i, I know sideshow did a, a cup i think they did one t-rex piece yeah. where yeah. the band was falling with the raptors on it and you know, it's a it's a cool little piece, but you know, it was done a long time ago, and you know, technology's changed, art has changed in the industry, and I, and and I think that this will be the first Jurassic piece that I think Stan would really be proud of. You know, 
Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it. I can't wait to see what that looks painted like painted up, and that's going to be probably a whole different ordeal trying to get those paint details. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, she's kind of big. You know, she's about twenty four inches long, so it's not tiny by any respect but it's just going to be cool to finally have a jurassic park t-rex you know i mean exactly it, everything that's out there is kind of like the t-rex's cousin you know it's not <laughs> it's not it's not her and, and i understand why they don't do it because nobody wants to get sued you know for making that because let's be honest crash mccreary who designed the t-rex you know before jurassic park t-rex drug their tail you know yep. uh, there yeah. was no there was no raptor the size of Utah Ra- Utah raptor wasn't even found. Um, you know it was Dionychus at that point. So you know if you want to get technical the dinosaur record, you know I think Stan Winston and Crash McCreary and all those guys they took it to a whole nother level, man. And and they, uh, they, really they made it cool. You know they made it cool. So Sam, what I would do to get Crash on another Jurassic film in the future. Oh, man, you know, I, yeah. I don't know what Crash is doing. I think he may be retired now, you know. It's just, it, it's very sad because I really love his work. And and like I said, I think he revolutionized what dinosaurs really look like and what people think dinosaurs look like. And it, and it's all because of Jurassic Park. I mean, it was leaps and bounds. And, and they worked with some of the best paleontologists in the world. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's... I don't know. I, 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 I still talk about it like I'm a little kid, you know, and, and I just, uh, and I wasn't a kid when I saw it, but it's, it's just, you know, it's one of those movies where you, you either have an affinity for it or you don't. And, yeah, and, and I love it. I mean, for everyone involved, I think it was, it's that first movie where it's like, so that's what dinosaurs look like. Sure, they took creative liberty with the designs, but out of all honesty, that's the first movie that put dinosaurs on the big screen. Like real dinosaurs on the big screen. Yeah, I think so, and it had a great cast. You know, you got you got Ted Knight, you got you got uh, uh, Sam Jackson for God's sakes. You know, and you got all this <laughs> cast of characters that somehow it all came together, and it just uh, it was the perfect blend. You know, and and it Jeff Goldblum, and it just worked. You know, so yeah. So you know, beyond the twentieth scale T Rex, we. We want to do an Indominus. We we're we've already designed a Mosasaur. You know we we're gonna go we're gonna go to Jurassic World. So Jurassic World's definitely you know in our wheelhouse. And the big thing we're working on right now is we're doing a six scale figure line for the Jurassic World franchise, Jurassic Park franchise. So yeah, I saw that post. So about. there will be jointed six scale figures. Um, I can give you guys kind of the scoop. We are doing Owen and Dr. Grant first. No and- way. Oh, nice. oh finally. Oh, and- you finally. have no and- idea. And they will be out this year. So, uh, oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> take my money, Paul. Yeah, take it now. I'll pre order now. Will, those will be in the, the $200, you know, price range to <laughs> be somewhere in there. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, kind of like a Hot Toys price where you we partnered with uh, ACI Toys, uh, who has a dress or has the uh, Lord of the Rings license and several of the major licenses. They do quality um, jointed figures and they're going to be doing all of our production and all of our materials now dean tolliver our artist here who's one of the best head sculptors he did the half scale arnold bust for us he did the the quarter scale arnold he's he's a great likeness artist he's working on owen right now and then we have uh, he'll probably be tearing into dr grant right after that so owen will be first this is amazing <laughs> And we're trying to get, uh, and we're doing a, we're doing a another series. I won't say what scale it is, but we're doing Owen and Blue as a statue as well. Wow. So um, fans are going to go mad. Well, it's going to be from the Entertainment Weekly cover where he's standing there with his arms crossed arms and his gun crossed, on his yeah. back, and Blue's kind of looking around his shoulder. Um, we've already got it approved. Universal's already approved the concept. They've approved both of the six scale figure concepts. We still have to go through uh, actor approval, so uh, you know the the two actors will get Sam Neill and and um, you know Chris will have to sign off on their likenesses, but we don't see any problem with that, you know. Yeah, so. that's incredible, Paul. Seriously, that's yeah. that is what we've been wanting to add. And <laughs> if you've listened to any of the previous podcasts that we've done, it's yeah, just constant complaints about 
no figures, no human figures, no, no... Yeah, and that was always a kick in the pants for me, you know, even when, you know, Kenner made the collectibles and everything, they just, they didn't get it right, you know, and nobody's ever made a, you know, nobody's ever made a Dr. Grant, to my knowledge. No, not, and, a, uh, not a nice one, other than since the old Kenner ones, no. So we've we've been like toying with well what does he come with what what what's he gonna have you know and <laughs> and, and so my my thing is it's like I want to have a little bit of stuff from you know like all three movies maybe even though he's only gonna be wearing the Jurassic Park clothes so maybe he'll have the bag with raptor eggs and he'll have nice. you know his little claw he threatens the little girl with or he'll have the flare you know he teases the <laughs> oh, and there's all this crazy stuff you know that you've got to you got to start thinking, well, what's the accessories that come with these guys, you know? So, you know, with Owen, it's pretty easy. You know, he gets a trank gun, he gets his rifle, he gets, you know, all these things. And, and, uh, so it's, it's, I think it's going to be fun. You know I mean? I'm, yeah, I'm going to be a hundred percent on a six scale is not my world, but Dean Tolliver, our digital artist, he's been working in the six scale world now for, I don't know, many years, five, six, seven years. And he's worked with ACI toys for three or four years. And, and so he's very, very in, much in that world and he knows that world inside and out. And I'm just kind of like, this is your baby, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let's I mean, get, I... get it right. And let's get all the details right. You know? So I think, um, I think Owen and Dr. Grant were the two, you know, to start with, and and I think they'll they'll do pretty well. So yeah, yeah. no, that's super. I think exciting. that's going to go. Some of the, I saw some of the Star Wars um, six scale recently in person, and all I could think of was how much I wanted that for Jurassic Park. So thank you. <laughs> well, you're, genuinely very excited now. You're very <laughs> welcome. And and I will say this: we are working on possibly a scale six scale dinosaur for the series as well. That's so, what I was uh, going to ask. Can you do our? Can you do like movable joint uh, dinosaurs? You, it would be a fully jointed six scale dinosaur. Yeah, I'm I will. Gonna, I'm I'll not going to say what it you, is, but uh, it's. I sent you my money now. <laughs> 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 you laugh. You laugh, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting. You know, we uh, we when we put up the the male T Rex, we just launched a brand new website. And we wanted to kind of get away from the PayPal thing, give people the option to put their own credit card in, stuff like that. We wanted a new look for the website. So um, our web designer, Chris Edmonds, who does the Dallas Cowboys and NBA and uh, NBL websites, designed our website. He's, he's a genius. I think he did a really great job on it. But yeah. we didn't realize the power of Jurassic Park. You guys crashed our website on Christmas Eve, I think, is when we put the male <laughs> T-Rex up. And it crashed our website, and we thought, "Wow, that's uh, that's pretty incredible," you know. And um, we didn't get it back up for like three days <laughs> because of the Christmas holiday. So, so, but people are finding this again, you know. All those people that because it was given errors, like, "Oh, you can't place an order right now," and people were literally freaking out. So, uh, everything's fixed and back up now. But we've we've gone to a private server, so hopefully we won't have those problems again when we start selling other stuff. Well, I'll That's tell you what, you might you might face those problems again when you come out with the uh, T-Rex breakout and the 160. I mean, yeah. all of those are really awesome pieces. So <laughs> yeah, are nuts. We're, now, we're now hand numbering everything. So, you know, it's cool. everybody wants that first one or they want a number that, like, for some reason on the half-scale bust, everybody was wanting to wait to get 101, you know, or 800. You know, they want a number that, is significant to the franchise so it's you know it's an odd thing but hey collectors i love them you know i'm a collector myself so you know, yeah I love about it. but it's yeah i think with jurassic it's 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 a lot of fun in that um i just don't think we can make it fast enough you know and that's the that's the that is the downside of it you know there's a backlog of films that everyone has their favorite dinosaur their favorite scene they want to see finally made Plus, there's new film. There's the Jurassic World and films in the future, and it's just, it's like a never-ending supply of moments and things people want to see. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you know, I've I've talked to my partners. I've talked to Dean. You know, my dream piece would be to have Owen on the motorcycle and like one night scale and four Raptors running around him. You know, I mean, that's, that would be cool. 
but but then we then we talk to our manufacturer and they're like you're insane you know you, you that's a twenty five hundred dollar piece and then my partner goes yeah we'll sell three and you're not gonna make it and I'm just like well I, if it's the easy road I don't want to do it you know so that's my dream piece from I think the Jurassic series would be you know Owen like jumping across a log one raptor going under it one going around and two coming over the top you know just like that scene and I I can see it in my head it's just I don't think other people like me to see stuff like that. So. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. <laughs> it's a bold, it's a bold piece, but damn it. <clears throat> I, I mean, everything that you've said, everything that's planned, I, I just, I can't help but get excited. Just think of the options, the different, you know, what, what will the Mosasaur, what will the Indominus look like? I'm, I'm excited. Well, I, think- our, I will say this. Our Mosasaur will have clear water. Um, it, it will be some somewhat submerged in the water and it's going to be killer. So it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a scene directly from the film and when people see it, they're going to be like, Oh my gosh, that's, that's awesome. You know? So I think it's to me, I mean, the Mosasaur played a huge part in Jurassic world and, uh, you know, so did Indominus. And, and I think with Indominus, we've got to, we've got to pick something that's pretty iconic for that character and I'm not sure what that is yet. You know, yeah. I'm, 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 I've, been, I've got to go back and watch the film again and just kind of really wrap my head around it because you know, it, it kills other dinosaurs. It does all this stuff, but you never see it do it. And that's the, that's kind of the problem. You know? Yeah. I, <laughs> the the, big, the two big scenes I think it gets is probably when it fights the, uh, the ankylosaur, kills the ankylosaur by the gyrosphere. And then the end of the movie. So you've got it in the forest, and then you got it on Main Street. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know, um, Ankylosaurus is probably my favorite dinosaur. You know, growing up as a kid. So, but it's a cool dino. I, I don't know. She's don't interesting. Know. She's got that really big mouth, though. The uh, Indominus that opens up, the long arms that can stretch out, touch the ground. It does a lot of weird things that just you don't see other theropods do in the Jurassic series. Well, that's because it's a mutant. That's, uh, that's, that's yeah, exactly. That's the problem with it, you know. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where they go with the next film. But there's a there's a lot of stuff going on in that movie that we can do. It's it's but you know people are wanting like Spinosaurus, and I'm just not sure about Spinosaurus in my heart of hearts. I mean, what do you guys think about doing a Spinosaurus? Aziz would want it. Uh, Aziz he's not would here want right it. now. If he was here right now, he'd be PayPaling you as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Swearing, usually saying, "Take it, take my money." Just effing, to, <laughs> effing to make the Spinosaurus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's a massive dinosaur, you know. And if we did that in twentieth scale, I think we figured it up. It'd be thirty six inches long, you know. So we'd have to scale it to where it wasn't scale with the T Rex, probably, because I don't think anybody would buy it at that size. Yeah, that's a bit big. It's a, it's a massive dinosaur, and then. I have a problem with Spinosaurus in that, you know, they now changed the fossil record in that the thing never left the water, you know, because he had right. really weak little legs, and it, and his legs aren't like they are in the film. And people come on there when I say that, and they go, ah, it's not about the fossil record, it's about Jurassic Park. And I'm just like, okay, you know, we'll suspend belief there again, you know. <laughs> but it, uh, It's a cool I, dinosaur. You know what I'd like to see before that, though, is the Dilophosaurus. Yes, Yes. it's a fan favorite and it's, and it's something that's never made. got good yeah well, it's... let me ask you a question would you want a one-to-one scale stan winston bust or would you want a full scale dinosaur full scale <laughs> i think a full scale dial would be well no 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 i'm saying oh, oh even a statue like, is Ooh, the, okay. the statue would be scaled but the 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 one-to-one we have access to the stan winston original you know for the one-to-one so i just don't know if that's that, if that's, that's better or or if it's or if it's a statue you know i'd take either that's, one honestly yeah both would interest me to be entirely honest that uh mm. yeah, anything dilophosaurus that that's fair. a fan favorite that people have wanted to see and that they're still greatly requesting to see in the future films they want to see it's uh it's one of those dinosaurs that a lot of people love despite it basically having a cameo in the you know first jurassic and the you're fourth. talking about the spitter yeah yeah, yeah. You know, it kind of just had a very short abbreviated scene, but it's become an iconic dinosaur because so, of it. In my opinion, you know, you'd almost have to have Nedry there saying, you know, I'm going to I'm going to run over you when I come back down the hill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I 
think you almost have to do it in a scene where we can put something else with it that makes it interesting. East you know? Dock sign. <laughs> What's I, that? That uh, the East Dock sign, the sign that uh, Nedry knocks over. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's the scene, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna run over you when I come back down this hill, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, yeah, it's gotta be one I of think... my favorite scenes from the franchise. So yeah, I, I would. It's I would... A, it's a funny scene for sure, and I think yeah. that. Uh, I think that that's something that definitely we can do, you know, and, and we're, we're definitely doing props. I mean, we're doing Hammond's cane, so that's, that's no oh. secret. We've got, we've got that in the works right now. Um, and that's going to be an exclusive with a website that we're doing. We're not actually going to be selling that piece. That's an exclusive for a, a Jurassic Park website that's out there. Um, I won't ruin their fun just yet. So that one's, that one's coming. Um, we've got some other prop ideas in the works, um, as well from the series. So, you know, I want to do some one-to-one -one real stuff and I want to do, you know, bus and keep the bus line going. Um, and, you know, as we can get Stan Winston maquettes and pieces, you know, if there's anybody out there that has, you know, a Stan Winston maquette or they have a, you know, one-to-one -one bust or anything like that. And they want to work out a, uh, you know, a deal just like Eric did uh, with the, uh, or Jonathan did with the female T-Rex, we worked a deal with him. So um, he's taking his deal in product. So if anybody's got anything that we could mold and cast, we're basically putting the call out, you know? So uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we can obviously share that on our platforms as well, because hearing of, of the things that you want to do and the things that are in the making is just incredibly exciting. This is something the franchise has lacked for its entire you know, since this existed, the franchise has never had this level of um, collectibles. From w what I can recall, we've said the sideshow ones before, and we've said, you know, obviously the Jurassic World Blu-ray had the Indominus and the T-Rex. I like that know, piece. I have that piece. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah it's nice. So. <laughs> it's a nice piece, but, you know, we've never had this level of detail. And obviously, as I told Assis, by the way, I just messaged him um, about Owen and Grant. And he he literally said what we predicted. Oh my God! Take my money, all of it. <laughs> so you know, well, Jack, everyone. I, I appreciate that. You know, it's and, and we would like people to put the shout out. You know, because I would love to replicate all of the Stan Winston maquettes just as classy maquettes. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to change them. I don't want to do anything to them. I just want to put them on a base and sell them, and um, you know, give the fans a little peek behind the, the, the curtain as you would, you know, but I, I would even like to find a, um, uh, one-to-one -one compi. I know it's out there, you know I mean? Oh yeah. I was trying to think who owns yeah. that. You I'm... know, Stan made one-to-one -one compies and he made resin copies of the one-to-one -one compi. So I would put a compi out tomorrow if I could get a casting of Stan Winston's. The problem is, the Winston family sold off most of the original archives that Stan had and Universal has nothing. They don't have anything. We went out, I don't know, maybe last year when we got the license and we said, hey, can you pull everything that you have? And what they pulled was, I mean, I don't want to knock the archives, but they just, they don't have anything. So they don't I, Yeah, it seems like they weren't prepared for uh, the longstanding success of Jurassic and probably Stan Winston Studios owned most of it. And they no did. No one ever foresaw the other half not keeping archives. It seems like. <laughs> yeah, right. So both sides kind of got rid of them. They're like, "Well, damn." <laughs> well, now my my partner is a is a collector and and he collects a lot of Jurassic Park. So we we have you know the the seven foot maquette. We we had the male head. Now we have the female um, bust. Um, we also have a one-to-one -one scale uh, Stan Winston Raptor, which we're going to build and finish for our booth for Comic Con this year. So we we're oh, going to build that up. We're we're going to go Jurassic Park this year. We're going to mold the head because at some point I want to do a a one-to-one -one trophy mount from the first movie. So we will we will be doing a one-to-one -one scale Raptor at some point. Um, just the head. And uh, it'll have a little bit of neck. It'll look like you went to Isla Sorna and hunted one, and they mounted it for you. You know, so <laughs> nice, um, man. so that's kind of exciting. That's kind of my theory on that one. That one won't be cheap either, but you know, I think it's something that you know, if we can do two hundred of it and we make it make sense, you know, I think it's a, I think it'll be a good piece. Uh, I would like to do some bronzes at some point. You know, I'd like to 
Stan Winston made uh, the T Rex and the Raptor Bronze, which were brilliant. You know, they go for yes. five, ten thousand dollars now. My partner has both of them. Um, <laughs> I think they're they're incredible pieces, and I would love to do some bronzes at some point. You know, yeah, um, they. Yeah. So, you know, we we've got a lot of plans for Jurassic. It's just, you know, you can only do so much. You don't want to burn the fans out. But sure. I think this year we're going to get out. We're definitely going to do the mail. You know, the mail bust is already up. We're going to get the 120th um, breakout, and then we're going to do the two figures. So we'll probably have, you know, four pieces this year, and then maybe like third, fourth quarter this year we'll start like two or three more dinosaurs for the following year. So you may see seven, maybe seven pieces this year. Um, Not all of them will be delivered this year, though. So um, basically – What's going to happen is every Jurassic fans out there is going to end up getting like three or four jobs on the side yeah. uh, to, co- <laughs> yeah. to collect everything is what I'm uh, – that's what I'm catching. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm not laughing because, oh, I'm evil. I'm, I'm laughing because I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, we, we, we're, we're a relatively new company. You know, we don't have that brand that other companies have. Um, we, we sell – product but we don't sell you know the kind of volumes that like a sideshow does and you know some of these other companies so it it takes a little time you know to get that brand recognition out there in the marketplace Uh all i can do is get cool licenses make the coolest stuff on the earth and hope that it sells so anything that the fans can do to get the word out there about you know our Jurassic park our mail bus i mean the more product we sell the more my partners are willing to make more product you know, exactly. so it all it all comes down, and I tell this to everybody. It's like people go, "Wow, we want more Robocop product," and it's like, "Well, I need to sell out of what I've got," you know, and I need to show my partners that you know it's got it's got legs. I think Jurassic, you know, crashing our website, sales have been pretty brisk on the bust. I think it's, I think Jurassic's going to be, uh, you know, a really good property for us. Terminator Genesis has been an extremely good property for us. So. We did the uh, loot crate for Comic Con last year with Jurassic World, as you guys may know. We did a mm-hmm. half scale Raptor Claw keychain that was in the loot crate last year. That was pretty popular. We're yeah, trying really to get nice. we're trying to get loot crate to buy an actual physical dinosaur for the loot crate. So we, huh. you know, we're we're trying to you know get into GameStop. We have a relationship with GameStop. We want dinosaurs in GameStop, but it's it you know it's a hard sell. Jurassic is while it's this billion dollar industry, it's it doesn't have the representation across all the other media platforms yet. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know, Star Wars reaches everything, but, you know, it's something, it's, that, it's, something that existed that's not fantasy but yet is fantasy doesn't doesn't register, I think, with the fans as strongly, you know. But I, I think it's just going through growing pains as a franchise because it kind of was a big, you know, a, a titan back in the 90s. And I think that after JP3, Universal kind of, you know, it kind of simmered out. And uh, I think now they're trying to figure out, like, well, we got to get this, we got to get this on shelves, and we got to, you know, give people things to digest and bring in between the films. And I think it's going through those growing pains again, it reestablishing itself on top right. of the food well, chain. With, you know, doing podcasts like this and and reaching out to the fans and letting the fans know what we're doing, what we're about. You know, I think the more we get the word out there, you know, we'll we'll get that little army of fans that when we put something out, it sells, you know, and that's, that's the, most, that's the most important part because, you know, even with universal universal basically told us that they love what we're doing. They love the level of detail that we're putting into our products. And it's something that they basically said they haven't seen before in a licensee. So we're very excited about that. You know, that means yeah, congrats, uh, congratulations yeah. again yeah. on that. That's, so, that's, you know, I mean, a high bar. Yeah, to get that kind of recognition from Universal and, and, you know, Dean did the comps for Grant and for Owen and they got approved out of the gate. So, you know, for the six scale figures. So, you know, there wasn't one change that they sent back. Uh, With the 20 scale Rex, they made a couple of different changes, but I think that's kind of cool because you're dealing with Spielberg's office. There's people there that work on Jurassic Park, so they have their own insight. And honestly, some of the details that they they mention, we use. You know, um, others we you know we'd already fixed it or we were going to fix it anyway. So uh, it's kind of an odd thing going through the approval process because if you show too little, they go, ah, this just isn't really detailed. You guys need to work on the detail. And then if you send them something really detailed, they go. 
ah, this detail's not right. You need to change all this. So it's a, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, it's a hard mix sometimes when you're, when you're going through the approval process. But I, I'll, I'll just say this. I, I love the ladies over at, at, at Universal. They've been a absolute pleasure to work with and, and they, they seem to love our stuff. They respond to us really quickly, which is unusual, you know, in this day and age of, you know, so many licensees. And we're a little guy, you know, we're not the big dog on the, not the big dog out there, but we definitely, we definitely have a really good franchise rights with Jurassic Park. And we plan to, uh, we plan to put out a lot of cool stuff, guys. I oh, yeah. I'm with, I'm cannot with wait to see more. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think as soon as I mean, we get our hands on something, we're we're probably going to do a full on review and send yeah. it out. Well, that's cool. Let me know who wants the piece, and we'll send it to you gratis. So um, just let me know who wants to review it, and uh, we'll send you out a, a complimentary piece for the review, and we'll make all that happen. Well, Thanks, Jack, Paul. I think that's all you. Yeah, well, this would be this would be amazing. Well, we'll um. Yeah, I mean, we, we can discuss that further, but Paul, I'd just like to say thank you so much for coming on, and, and thank you for the exclusive. I mean, human yeah. beings, I'm, I'm done. I'm spent. Yeah. This is um, <laughs> incredibly, you know. incredibly exciting, and thanks so much for just opening up, sharing so much, and just no talking. No problem, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Jurassic Park, and I, wanna, I, want, I want the fans to know, you know, that we need your help. You know, we... We want to be the company, and, I, and we're, on a, we're on a board called the Statue Forum, and I want to give a shout-out to the Statue Forum and all the collectors at Statue Forum at statueforum.com. We are a forum supporter, which means we pay to be there. We have our own subcategory. When you go to Statue Forum, it's Chronicle Collectibles. I ask all the fans who are Jurassic Park fans to sign up. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up at Statue Forum. Just log in, get your own ID. And then um, go to Chronicle Collectibles. It's right under the main header. And give me some feedback on Jurassic Park. Give me ideas. Tell me what you want. Hey, if I make a six-scale Dr. Grant, what do you want to see him holding? What do you want to see him come with? You know, think outside the box. And if you've got a maquette, if you've got a Stan Winston piece, if you've got anything that relates to the Jurassic Park universe that we could make as a product, let us know, and we'll take care of you. And... You know, so we're 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 all about the fans. And if you go to statueform.com, we're very active over there and, and we we do listen. So, you know, if we screw up, we're not too we're we're not too big to make the change and, and work with the fans. You got it. That's man. great. Thank you, Paul. And yeah. so yeah, check out chroniclecollectibles.com for the yes. uh, Chronicle official website. And obviously you've got you're on Facebook, which is where you made the first announcement about the Jurassic license, but you're also on Twitter under, is it Chronicle LLC? I am not the one that runs the Twitter account. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Chronicle There's LLC. All the, links, all the click-throughs are on the website, though. So Yeah, yeah, ChronicleCollectibles.com. Yeah, ChronicleCollectibles.com, and, um, you know, sign up for the newsletter. Um, you know, it's hross at ChronicleCollectibles.com. That's H-R-O-S-S, and... Um, Heather will get you on the newsletter, and that will be where we do a lot of our announcements, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, but we're pretty prolific on Facebook and Statue Forum. So that's the two places where a lot of people go to get their information. Statue Forum, I'm going to join now. <laughs> Brilliant. To join for ages, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. No, statueforum.com, and we have a Jurassic Park thread over there, and and you can start your own thread, Jack, if you want to, and do an introduction, and and I'm happy to go ahead and start, you know, promoting you guys over there if you want me to, and and you know, it's it's all about everybody sharing, so we have the common goal of you know making the coolest Jurassic Park stuff that we can. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're totally in. Uh, yeah. totally in. Awesome. Paul, thank you so much for coming on. It's it's been amazing to speak with you and yeah, I mean I'm gonna go and celebrate the figures. So And, and listen um, guys, we're we're in Irving, just uh northeast Dallas. If you guys are ever in our area for any reason, give me a call, we'll give you a full tour. Oh. Amazing. I'll tell you what, I've been there and it's a it's an awesome place with an awesome team full of people. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. It, it really is a great, great place. I appreciate that. Fantastic. All right, well, brilliant. Thanks a lot, Paul. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll speak to you soon. Have you on again. All right, guys. Thank you. And we'll talk to you soon.